In this video, we're going to take a look at one of the most important factoring steps, yet it's also one of the most forgotten. It seems after learning all these new factoring tricks like cubes and difference of squares and perfect squares and AC method and grouping method, we forget about the most basic type of factoring, and that is the greatest common factor. We also forget that we must always factor the GCF, or greatest common factor, first on any factoring problem before we use any other method. So let's take a look at some examples that require us to do just that. This first problem, 72x squared minus 2, you'll notice has a GCF of 2. When I factor out the 2, we're left with 36x squared minus 1. Now that we've taken care of the GCF, I'll look inside to see if it can factor any more. When I see that squared, I'm thinking difference of squares, because it's also subtraction. Sure enough, the square root of 36x squared is 6x, and the square root of 1 is 1. As we factor, we keep the GCF out front, and then it's going to factor to the sum and difference of those square roots. 6x plus 1 and 6x minus 1 to complete our problem. Let's take a look at another problem. Here we're taking 48x squared y minus 24xy plus 3y. Again, it's important we always do the greatest common factor first. Looking through this problem, we see the greatest common factor is 3y. When we factor out the 3y, we get 16x squared minus 8x plus 1. Noticing we have three, fact three terms in this parentheses, we're probably going to keep factoring using the AC method. 16 times 1 means we're multiplying to 16 and adding to negative 8. A pair of numbers that makes that work are negative 4 times negative 4 and negative 4 plus negative 4. However, this is significant to us because the negative 4's match. When they match, we drop everything because it's going to factor to something squared. Also, don't forget the GCF out in front of that perfect square. We fill in the perfect square, taking the square root of the first term, which is 4x, the sign from the middle, minus, and the square root of the last term, 1. We have now factored this problem. Let's take a look at one more example, which requires us to do the GCF first. In this problem, we have 128 a to the 4th b squared plus 54 ab to the 5th. The greatest common factor here will be 2 a b squared. When we factor out the 2ab squared, whoops, we're left with 64a cubed plus 27b cubed. When I see those cubes, I'm thinking about continuing on using the sum of cubes formula. Sure enough, the cube root of 64a cubed is 4a, because 4 cubed is 64, and the cube root of 27b cubed is 3b. We can now factor this, keeping the GCF out front of 2ab squared, to a binomial and trinomial factor. The binomial is made up of those roots we just found, 4a and 3b. Then I square the 4a to get 16a squared, multiply them together to get 12ab, and finally square the 3b to get 9b squared and then I use soap to fill in the signs. S stands for same sign as the problem, or plus. O is the opposite, or minus, and the last one is always positive. We have now factored this problem completely. As you can see, by factoring out the GCF first, we're then able to move on and identify which special product or other type of factoring we need to use. The important thing is the GCF is always factored first.